Hi, I'm Cindy McGee, and you're watching Polymer Clay TV. Today's pattern to polymer design is inspired by these colorful mandala swim trunks. I started with some Primo Sculpey Black, which I conditioned and rolled to a 4 on my clay machine. You can see how thick it is here, but you can actually make it as thick or as thin as you'd like. And I'm going to use an assortment of round mandala type silk screens from Create Along to make my pattern and some DecoArt Americana Multi-Surface Satin White Paint. My first one is this floral frame silk screen and I'm placing it orange side down onto the clay sheet. I like to give it a little roll with my roller just to make sure it's going to stay in place. And then silk screen with the white paint. There's your first one and now I'm going to just move it off to the sides and screen it here and there. Immediately wash your silk screen so that it's ready for use next time and let these screened mandalas dry. Once those are dry, it's time to move on to your next one. I'm using this one, which is the Polynesian screen from Create Along. And I'm going to allow my mandalas to overlap each other like they do in the original fabric. Do the same thing, allow some of them to extend off. And once you've done a few of those, go ahead and wash that screen and let the paint dry. I decided the next one I'm going to use is this Tree of Life one and I'm doing the same thing allowing them to overlap. And then I chose another different mandala and silk screened that one in between in some of the blank areas overlapping the others. Really any round or mandala type silk screened images will work for this so use your choice of them. Create Along does also have some great silk screens that are already sort of overlapping different mandalas all in one single screen. Wash this last silk screen that you used and then let all of the paint dry on the clay before proceeding. Next I poured a little bit of 70 percent alcohol into a little lid to use for the next steps. I've got some little cotton pads that I've cut into strips and I'm going to be using alcohol inks to color the surface. You can really use any colors you'd like for this process. These are just happen to be the ones I chose to mimic that original fabric. The first color I'm going to use is this plum. I'm taking my little cotton strips and dipping them into that clear alcohol and then adding a drop of the colored ink and just dab it onto the surface. I want to color just sections of these mandalas. I took a separate little piece of the cotton pad and just I'm using it to sort of blot the surface here and there where I need to to remove any excess alcohol ink. Grab a clean piece of your cotton padding and move on to the next color ink. I'm using the Sailboat Blue. Next, I'm going to use, I think, my yellow. And then I'm going to switch to a new clean cotton pad and use some green. And then lastly, I'm going to use this purpley shade. Go back and fill in any areas or add more color as you like. 
until you're happy with the overall effect. And now it's ready to be made into polymer trading coins or jewelry or however you'd like to use it. So after baking, you can see that those alcohol inks really faded back a bit to a more pastel effect. You can leave them this way if you're happy with this effect, or I chose to continue on and actually add some more ink to them, and I'm going to show you that next. I went ahead and created some backgrounds and backing pieces for all of these jewelry pieces using some black Primo and some texture sheets from Create Along. I really wanted to bring back the vibrancy of the original veneer, so I'm going to reapply my alcohol inks right over these finished pieces. I did bake them with the backs on them. They're baked and cooled now. And it's the same process basically that I did before. I'm just going to go over it and reapply those inks. Once those alcohol inks had a chance to dry, I went back and added some clear liquid Sculpey to the surface of each of them, just a very thin layer to set the vibrancy of those inks. You could rebake them at this point and follow the manufacturer instructions, but I'm just using a heat tool because it's such a thin layer. And just be careful and keep moving it so you don't burn it, and it will cure that top layer and give them a little shine. I decided to bling them up a little bit, and to do that I'm using a couple of different hot fix cabochon options that I did also get at Create Along. And these will hot fix if you bake them with the clay, but I'm going to use a little E6000 adhesive to make mine stick on at this point because I don't plan on rebaking these pieces. I drilled some little holes in these earring pieces and connected them with some black gunmetal jump rings. And once I got my hot fix cabochons glued in place, I went ahead and glued some posts to the back. Now, because I want these posts to stay put for sure, I did take a little ball of black clay and place it down over the post and smooth it down just to help hold them in place, and then rebaked these to set and cure that clay. I finished off the necklaces with some black metallic chain and some black satin cording. For more inspiration, join our Polymer Clay Tribe Facebook page. Over 17,000 members sharing projects every day. For lots more creative polymer clay ideas, visit the Polymer Clay TV blog.